Well, howdy folks, it's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. I got a new camera, so I'm excited to use it. It's got a larger screen and should make things a little bit easier for me and all that other good stuff. I also have a camera stand, if you haven't noticed, over here. So we're going to try some new things and uh, start posting some cool videos. So since I have a new camera, the next few videos are going to be pretty raw and rough. I'm not real sure as to how much space I have, how big of a video I can make, all that other stuff. So in the event I'm in the middle of explaining something and for whatever reason the video cuts itself off or I end up messing it up, I'm going to go ahead and post it anyways. So I'm just warning you now, uh, these next couple of videos could be a little choppy, funky, messed up. But I do feel that the information in the videos is worth posting regardless of how unprofessional the camera work is or the video is if that makes sense so anyways let's get this show on the road so my my last couple of videos we've been looking at this 95 96 gmc k 1500 with a 5.7 liter engine in it now this is the one with a uh, grenaded u-joints and drive shaft so it is receiving a new yoke in the back uh rebuilt drive shaft u-joints all that other stuff and and so we're waiting on that stuff to come back mainly uh the drive shaft it's going to have to be completely rebuilt they're they're going to have to cut off one end of the drive shaft and re-weld a new yoke on there and all that other stuff and if they can't ultimately if they can't fix that drive shaft then six states which is the place that i outsource my drive shafts to will just build a new one so We've got that going on and we're just waiting for that. In the meantime, we decided we would go ahead and do some maintenance on the vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and start breaking the top half of this engine down and pulling the lower intake, pulling the throttle body, getting all the accessories off of the front so we can get in here and fix up the intake gaskets and the heater hose connectors and all that other stuff, some of the leaks that we found, and just general maintenance uh, while we're doing that in order to pull the intake, the distributor has to come out and stuff like that. So we're gonna put new cap and rotor and plugs and wires and, and all that good stuff on there. As a matter of fact, it looks like, looks like Christmas in the garage because we have all these new parts and boxes boxes and boxes full of new parts so we have a full box here here's our rear end yoke and kit got that from Dorman comes with everything we need seal crush nut washer all that other stuff and then yeah every gasket that's going to be associated with that intake uh lower intake gaskets distributor Gaskets and O-rings, throttle body gaskets, EGR gaskets, thermostat gaskets. I'm going to go ahead and do the valve cover, heater hose connectors, new bolts. Anytime you pull an intake on these GM vehicles, Chevy or GMC, anytime you do an intake job, you want new intake bolts, thermostat, cap and rotor, plugs, wires, and a partridge in a pear tree. And of course, we have all of our rear end stuff here as well so two gallons of coolant now because i live and work in idaho i only use full strength antifreeze and coolant and yeah i'm sure there's going to be some people that are oh no blah 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 don't do that because this 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 and this uh my mentor who's lived and worked in idaho for 50 plus years says that the best thing to do is to use full strength now down in texas we might not use full strength, which is where I cut my teeth in the automotive repair uh, industry. But here in Idaho, we have weeks on end where there is consistent below freezing weather. So if you're up north somewhere or if you're in an area where you're just constantly below freezing for days or even weeks on end, you really just want to use full strength antifreeze. And that literally boils down to better be safe than sorry. Since I've lived up here and been working up here the past six years, I've actually found and have ran across about three or four. I actually think it's been three, if I'm thinking right. Yeah, I ran across three different GM and Chevy vehicles where we pulled the intake off and found that the valley of the block inside of there was cracked because people have been putting a mixture of antifreeze and water in it and the mixture eventually became so diluted with water, it froze up and just turned into a giant ice slushy inside of the engine and 
crack the engine block also so so yeah i use uh, full strength antifreeze so when i do these jobs one of the first things I do pretty much is in order to get down into this intake and get this intake off safely without causing any damage or anything like that, pretty much everything you see on top of here, everything you see here needs to come off and get out of the way. You do want to go ahead and remove things like your alternator and brackets and your AC compressor. Now what you do is you unbolt the compressor from the brackets, you leave the lines intact you don't disconnect the lines or anything like that and then you just simply set the ac compressor aside that way you don't have to release any freon or anything like that and we're going to remove the battery to make some room to take these parts off and lay them aside like for example the ac compressor can lay right here in the battery compartment area and you don't need to remove the freon lines or anything like that so i'm going to show you you know basically how to do this job from start to finish so it's probably definitely going to take a few different videos so to start with what i want to do is i just want to kind of view my engine get familiar with all of my electrical connections uh hose connections all of that stuff and i want to see what i can move out of the way now the way i work is kind of like a typewriter i start at one end of the engine and I get an idea of what it is that I'm that I'm going to set out to do, which right now it's going to be to remove the fan shroud, the fan, and some of these electrical wires that you see. So I'm going to start here at the front driver's side of the engine, and I'm going to get everything that I feel like I need out of the way, and I'm just going to work my way over to this way. And then when I end up over here, I'm going to take a look at the engine again. I'm going to start on this side, and I'm going to remove everything I need to get out of the way. And I'm just going to kind of dance back and forth like that as I'm removing things, making a mental note of what I remove and where everything goes. So, um, also, another fair warning, I am at home with four kids, and I'm homeschooling them on, on top of this, so there's definitely going to be a lot of pauses and breaks due to that. So, all right, folks, so I'm going to go ahead and get this camera set up, and let's go ahead and get to work. Okay, so first thing I want to do here is I want to get this fan shroud out of the way because we're going to need to get down in here and we're going to need to get the fan removed and all that other stuff. So fan shroud first, that's the easiest thing to do. And then you see this line right here. If you want to, at the, at the exact same time you're doing this, you can also go ahead and disconnect your main battery cable because that's what this is and you can take this cable and just set it aside over there but i'll show you that here in a minute so in order to remove your fan shroud you're going to want to grab yourself a 10 millimeter socket and you're also going to want to grab yourself some extensions just to make it easier, you don't have to use extensions, but that'll just make it easier to get down into the top bolts there. Now you're only going to be removing the top part of the fan shroud. The bottom part will come out around the same time that you're removing your fan. So you got three bolts here, and you know what I was thinking? I was thinking I need to inv invest in a nice impact drill. I was actually taught and brought up that you don't touch anything on an engine with a... Well, it's not that you don't touch anything on an engine. There are just a lot of things you don't touch on an engine with an impact gun. Because, you know, threads like to get pulled out and ripped out and stripped out and stuff. Especially when you're dealing with anything aluminum and whatnot. But one of my mentors that uh, I highly respect came to me recently and he had a whole whole toolbox full of really nice Milwaukee and DeWalt mechanics impact guns, man. The, the drills and stuff. And he was like, boy, let me tell you, I wasn't a believer until I actually got a hold of them. And I'm, I'm a believer now. So I think I'm going to start using electric impact guns and stuff, drills and whatnot. Now, as you're pulling this shroud off, you know, take your time, take a peek, make sure there's no other wires or anything connected to it that might break when you're pulling stuff off. And once you get these top three bolts off, then you're going to go down in here 
and you're gonna have four more little bolts to pull out as well. They're gonna be 10 millimeter also. That one only had one on that side. Looks like this side has both of them. And there we go. Now we should just be able to lift the fan shroud out. All right, we got that out of the way. So I'm gonna go find a safe place to put that for now. And so while you're doing this job, by removing that fan shroud, not only have you opened it up so you can get in here and work um, and remove your fan and stuff, but at the same time, we've opened it up so you can also start inspecting things because some of this stuff has to come off in order to get back in here safely. So it's time to start seeing what we just might end up running into. And don't be surprised if you do see you know rusted bolts things like that that you're looking at you're going oh man this bolt right here that one that one looks like it could break and stuff like that so that's that's kind of what you want to do once you get your fan shroud off just kind of start taking a peek at huh was there anything that can jump out and bite us type of deal now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to get my battery disconnected and i'm going to start working on getting other things disconnected as well like for example the filter and breather up there so i'm gonna go check on my kids right now they're doing homeschool i'll be right back and we're gonna we're gonna start again back over here and start working our way back this way again all right let's see what we're gonna do next here let's see i've got vacuum line here electrical connector there I got one I got temperature sensor connector go ahead and get that out of the way I'm gonna leave so what I'm gonna do so first I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way There we go. We go place that somewhere safe where we don't lose it. And so I don't lose these. I'm just going to place them right back on there. For now. Okay. Now that I got that out of the way. There's some other electrical connector connections. And this vacuum line, I'm gonna disconnect from here, but I'm gonna leave it connected to the canister over here. So that way when it's time to put it back together, I at least know where it goes. And I'm just gonna tuck that in down over here. Just like so. All right, and got that done. Got a ground there. Let's see. Another temp sensor there. Some type of piece of wire just hanging out in there. Okay, and I probably want a tool to get that off. <clears throat> See, we got our throttle body stuff. Now this is just gonna clip off 
same with this I'll actually try to get the camera down in there closer when I do that to show you that so as you see I've kind of just started over here working my way back this way getting what little electrical connectors I can out of the way and now I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my battery And I need an eight millimeter ratchet to do that. I'm gonna go grab that, I'll be right back. All right, so. The one thing you can almost always guarantee on these vehicles is that the battery post is gonna be stripped out a little bit. me take this cable I'm just gonna move this guy completely out of the way good to go there and then next is to actually just get our battery removed which means I'm gonna have to relocate my camera so now as you can see we're really starting to get things opened up where we can get into our electrical connectors and all that other stuff. We started over here, worked our way this way, ended up at removing our battery. Now we're gonna reset and start over here. And it looks like what we're gonna start with over here is spark plug wires. And we will more than likely go ahead and disconnect our throttle cables and then start disconnecting any other electrical connections that we see and just you know again just making making a nice dance out of it nice back and forth flowy motion and just getting everything disconnected without breaking anything and all that other good stuff all right hopefully this camera stays here okay so getting back into our groove of things starting back over here and i'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the plug wires disconnected and if I can I'm just gonna go ahead and pull them All right. now I got those out of the way While I'm back here, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the stuff out of the way. At least on top. And I'll disconnect those from the engine. Alright. Now I've armed myself with a couple different mechanics picks and stuff like that. So I can start getting in here and getting some of these electrical connectors completely disconnected. We got those guys. That's good. Now this is interesting. This is taped. Come on out of there. There we go. Okay. That's a vacuum line. But it's been taped to this part on the throttle body. As you can see. Not real sure why somebody would do that, but to replace this vacuum line isn't gonna be expensive at all. So I'm gonna make a note of this put this back on here like this for now I'm gonna make a note of this and uh, when I come back to this in a minute I'm gonna make a note to buy a new one and just get that fixed up so we're not having tape in here and stuff like that all right so throttle body connectors on the bottom here all you got to do 
push your throttle body back, grab it and it snaps right off, just like that. Now on the top, you've got a connector here. So take your pick, pull up on your connector, and all that will now come apart. And honestly, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, set this aside somewhere special so I can make a note. And then from here, if you wanted to go ahead and start removing your throttle body, you could. You just gotta make sure you're getting all your connectors disconnected and all that other stuff. So I'm gonna set this aside and continue working. All right, so now we're really getting things opened up. We can start seeing other electrical connections and things that we want to get disconnected. Like for example here. Okay, and take your time when you're working with electrical connections. That way they don't break on you. Some of these probably haven't been removed for a very long time. So they probably don't want to move. There we go. And we'll just tuck. Well, we'll just get you guys out of the way completely. Sorry if my arm's in the way. You can't see. Right now what I'm doing is disconnecting the distributor. And I'll tell you, if you can get good with a mechanics pick, plastic connectors, they won't mean nothing to you. Got a plug wire hung up there. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna come over here to this side. Go ahead and disconnect my throttle body. Disconnect my vacuum hoses. And we got another. Oh, there we go. Okay. Come on. All right. We got some fuel lines on the throttle body we need to get disconnected got a brake booster line we need to get disconnected probably wouldn't hurt to go ahead and get our throttle cables out of the way stuff like that it looks like somebody rigged this up right here I'm gonna have to figure this out if you can see that so you got this PVC valve and again you got one it's all taped and stuff so it would be a good thing just to replace this it's cheap enough all right and so that puts me over here as you saw getting stuff disconnected making mental notes of what goes where if you want to take pictures of everything you're disconnecting go ahead and do that also that's another way you can get stuff done so now I'm gonna go ahead and reset I'm gonna not worry about the electrical connections I'm gonna go ahead and get the fan removed okay and this this fan doesn't take a special tool you just need to get these bolts off I've went ahead and pre soaked them with penetrating oil so they've been soaking for about 30 minutes now that should make that easier to get off and then once we get the fan off, we're going to start working on getting some of the hardware off. Uh, alternator out of the way, tensioner, AC compressor. We're going to be getting all this out of the way so then we can have just all the access we need to get back in there. So I'm going to go ahead and reset the camera. See if I can get it to where you can see.
I think that's a good, good way, good place. Maybe not. Hold on. There we go. I think you can see there. That way now. All right. So I'm going to pause it. I'll be right back. All right. So the next thing I'm going to get into is removing the fan. I'm going to be using a half inch wrench or an 11 millimeter. I'm going to show you a little trick that I'm going to do here. Most people know this trick. I'm going to take another wrench and I'm going to put it on here and use that as like a breaker to give myself leverage to loosen these bolts up nice and easy. What do they say? Work smart, not hard. This would be a perfect example of working smart and not working hard. You see the force I have to put on there without using that little breaker? So yeah, show you how that goes. You go like this. You can go like that. You can go like this. And that gives you the perfect little little thing for leverage there. That way you don't have to bust your knuckles open. And then once you get them broken loose, they should just really come right off. There's not a huge torque spec for these nuts and bolts, so if they honestly, if they don't just come right off, there's something going on. Either A, somebody seriously over -tight tightened them at one point, or they're just all rusted, corroded, dirty, and nasty. But I soak these ahead of time in penetrating oil, so they're coming off nice now. All right, now you want to be careful. You don't want to hit the radiator with the fan. And sometimes the fan may not want to come right off. It may jump off of there. See, just like that. So you want to be careful that you don't hit the radiator. All right, so now that we got that fan out of there nice and safe, we're gonna go ahead and remove the belt. That's gonna, that looks like that's gonna be a 15 millimeter socket, so I'm gonna go get that real quick. Okay, and that's gonna be a 16 millimeter socket. Now, if you have a belt tool, you should already have the right part connector that you need there to get on there. If you don't have a belt tool and you have a breaker bar, or a ratchet in a socket you can use that I'm using my breaker bar I have a belt tool also but I'm just using my breaker bar just to show you guys different ways of doing things here you never want to let your tensioner slap back you want to just let it go back nicely on its own okay we get our belt out of the way and again, because I want to protect my radiator, I'm going to go ahead and just remove the water pump pulley. It's also going to allow me to kind of get in here and expect the water pump. That's a pretty decent water pump. It doesn't freely spin. See, it goes about almost a full turn and then stops. So I don't really see any leaks or anything like that. So yeah, water pump looks pretty good, and I just I removed that pulley off of there because it does have a potential to fall off and break something, and we don't want that to happen. So, all right, folks, well, I'm going to end this video here. I'm going to try to keep these videos right at around 30 minutes. When I come back for part two, we're going to remove the radiator hose, and we're going to start removing all of the stuff that we can 
on the front of this engine to get it out of the way so we can start servicing and removing intakes and throttle bodies and just open everything up so we, we can get in there and work well so alrighty folks well I really appreciate you guys coming out and checking out my videos and supporting me I am working on getting merchandise and t-shirts and other stuff for sale I do have a couple just very simple t-shirts shirts for sale so if you if you want to support me further maybe consider buying a t-shirt or something like that I greatly appreciate it also give me your ideas for different merchandise that we could sell on the YouTube channel here and all that other good stuff. So, all right, once again, thanks for supporting me. Thanks for watching my my channel. If you have any questions, shoot them to me in the comments. We can trade emails. I love helping you guys out. I also love hearing from you guys as the different suggestions and ways to do things as well. So, all right, guys, well, I'm signing off.